This is the Friday, October 28th, 2016 version of the Market Plus segment. Joining us now is Naomi Bloom. Naomi, welcome back. Thank you. We are glad to have you. We've got a number of questions here from our followers on social media. We encourage all of you to follow us on Facebook and on Twitter. And our first question comes from Doyle in Alma, Arkansas, and he wants to know, will the prices of lean hogs ever recover or are they going to continue to hit all-time lows? You know, the worst is behind us. I really feel that way. I think the market has absorbed the threat and the scare of this um, production over capacity. I think it's an old story. Probably look for a bounce to the market into the mid-50s, uh, but then looking for sideways trade after that because we have to really get a handle on where the production truly is versus the demand. And so it's going to probably get into a more of a boring trading range for a while. Okay. But hey, I think the worst is behind us. Right, but not a recovery to 90 any time in the no. future. No, it would, it would take a true production issue like a PED virus or something like that uh, magnitude okay. to burn through the supplies that we have. Gotcha. Next question, looking over at the grain markets, we're going to Roger from Facebook. Roger wants to know, where do grain prices go from now until planting next year? Does He wants to know, do you expect corn to be three forty to $4? Okay, here's two scenarios. If we don't have La Nina show up, um, then I would look for corn prices to trade more in a sideways range. In the big picture, what that number would mean um, at the very worst, 325, and at the very best, 375, and just meander back and forth in a very boring pattern. If La Nina shows up, and depending on the severity of it and how that would affect the crop in South America, the funds are gonna jump all over that, and they will make it exciting for us, in which case, the first target would be more of a $4 to 450 range. So you have to be ready for either scenario to unfold, um, and, and just really be ready for what, both, because all we're watching is this La Nina thing, and that's exactly what the funds are watching too. So that's it. So keep your eyes on the weather. That's okay. that's it for the next, like, uh, from now till planting. Now, given the fact that right now we're in the middle of your worst case trading range, uh, do you want to be buying some calls in here on corn you're selling? Is this where your bull call spread comes in as you're looking out for the remainder of the year? Absolutely, because we've seen the funds on whatever goofy whim show up to the party and then everybody's all mad because they surprised too soon. So if you have made sales, um, you know, strategy one for the most conservative strategy is that bull call spread. And again, it's not one that I use often, but I think for this is the right tool for this year. There's not a lot of risk tolerance out there right now. This is cheap and it keeps you in the market and it keeps you going if the market should rally. Uh, for the more aggressive traders, you could stick with buying the call. Um, and then on a setback here, consider selling a put under it on the theory that, you know, the big picture $3 is going to hold us or, you know, the 325 level. So if you're a person who can handle that risk, then you could sell a put under the market. But I don't think I would do that right now, just okay. in case. Okay. Now, speaking of South America, we did anticipate larger corn plantings down there due to their high cash mm -hmm. price. Is that what we're seeing materialize? Um, I haven't heard too much about South America right now other than it's been rainy in Argentina and corn planting is behind there but their soybean planting is that they're done. That's all I've heard lately. Okay. So um, I was actually looking for some news on that before I came here today. I couldn't find too much. Hmm. I wonder if no news is good news or not. Maybe. Okay. Well, we've got a question here from a follower in Iowa. This is from Elizabeth in Miles, Iowa, and she's asking uh, basically a basis question. How can the board in Chicago, the Board of Trade, have a price of 1014 for soybeans, yet ADM in Cedar Rapids only pay 947? Well, it is the basis, um, and the board price is reflective of where, in general, a price point, starting point should be for the United States, just to give everyone an idea. And then your basis is your actual cash market telling the truth. And step back and think about these crazy monster yields that are coming out of these fields. Truly, truly, every phone call that I have is mid-50s at a minimum with a whole lot of mid-70s. That's crazy. Yeah. So when you have all of this product coming to town, because you can get essentially pretty good price for them right now, the elevators or the processing plants are saying, we don't quite need it, we'll take it, but we have a lot of supply here. Also, depending on where you're selling to, um, if they're not just using the product right there and distributing it, they have to ship it or truck it over to the river 
And then it has to get on a barge and it has to get down the river. And then it has to get on a bigger boat and get across the ocean. So the transportation makes up the biggest component of basis. Now, with this fairly impressive rally in soybean futures prices over the mm -hmm. past week. Has basis weakened consistently across the country? Have we seen relatively flat cash prices on the week? Um, I was looking at that and it's wide, but not like the wide est, but it's not getting wider. Okay. So. Cash prices climbing. I think the pipeline was really empty. Oh. I think it really was. And the beans that are coming in right now were needed for exports. And even though exports have been so strong right now, so strong, when you step back and look at the picture, we are at 57% of total USDA sales for what they thought our exports should be, and that includes the higher exports from a year ago. And normally this time of year, we're at 58% sold. So when you look at the picture, we're at a percentage rate sold of where we normally are. We just happen to have a bigger number that we're selling this year. Okay. But we're on target for what we would normally be doing. Okay with the bigger bean harvest. Correct. Hmm. Okay. So what does that tell you? Cash-wise, same story. We're just going to have to wait till farmers quit hauling the excess to town before basis starts to tighten? That's exactly what it is. All right. And some current and immediate export news would help. Yes. As yep. always. Uh, next question for you from Tim in Cruxton, <coughs> Minnesota. Tim is on Twitter at the $6 wheat guy. He wants to know, and this was something that Don Rose brought up last week. With maybe 4 million, and Don mentioned 5 million, more acres of soybeans next year, should I use this rally to sell some 17 crop? And the answer is yes. Um, November 17 prices are at 10 bucks for futures. That is the highest it was this summer on the big rally, or spring summer, okay. when we had that rally. This is an amazing starting point. You should be getting started, 5 to 10 percent sales, absolutely. Why not? But again, if La Nina shows up this winter, or if we have production issues next year, be ready to defend that and reown it in case the market should rally, because then I don't want to hear the complaining about, everybody told me to sell, and then the market went higher, because this is part of your planning and understanding your weighted average price. You've got to really be mindful of the whole picture and weather can really turn this thing on a dime this year. Now, given that we're selling a year into the future, is that an outright future sale? Can you, do options make any sense with the year's time value in them? I would not buy a put out that far. Okay. I wouldn't sell futures out that far. Okay. I would focus on your cash market. Call your elevator and see if you can do a, um, perhaps a hedge to arrive or just a full out forward contract and just keep it simple that way. All right. And then be ready to reown should La Nina actually come into yes. effect. Next question from Glenn in <laughs> Bryan, Ohio. Glenn is on Twitter at Glenn underscore newcomer. He wants to know, with the recent gains in corn and bean prices, what are your greatest market concerns, fundamentally speaking? What keeps Naomi Bloom up at night looking at the market fundamentals? There's always seven or eight things I'm watching. The dollar, the funds, supply, you, you know, not just here, but demand. Uh, keeping an eye on global riffraff from the standpoint of politics, things like that, and global economies. And so um, every morning I'm really kind of keeping tabs on everything that's happening. And it's almost like, what do they call those weighted scale things? Or, yeah, scales. Right? Scale? Yeah. One of these kind of scales. Right, the, the yeah. justice holds the justice in, the, in scale. front of the courthouse. Yeah. yeah. So sometimes they're evenly balanced with all of these seven or eight things that I'm watching, but all of a sudden um, three or four of them get a little bit friendlier or then all of a sudden five of them are friendly. And so you have to watch when even just one little tidbit of news becomes friendlier for one of those seven or eight segments, how it affects the whole. And so it's, it is a lot harder to do marketing than it ever used to be. And then you have to you know, keep in mind the funds are their own fundamental. And then we're watching the charts. And so there's a lot to balance. And, and every week it's different, but as long as you're keeping an eye on all of it as a whole, you can you know, find that balance a little easier and okay. know when it's going to go. As we sit here on uh, Friday night, are the scales pretty well balanced? Uh, we know we've got the strong dollar, but hopefully growth in these, uh, you know, uh, emerging economies. I mean, are we pretty well at a wash? Well, from that standpoint, from the dollar and the economies, I think we're at a balance. Um, but when you look at it from the whole picture, 
of course, it's been balanced to the friendlier side of things. And now I think we'll see that set back down this way a little bit for November, because now we'll get um, into the next USDA report, which will likely show a larger yield for the beans and probably not too much action for corn. Okay. And so we've got nothing to talk about. So then we go back into sideways trading. What's your what's your bean yield number from USDA? I don't 53, know. 53, 55? I, I, I don't have any way to gauge it just because of how big these yield numbers are hearing. I, I have no idea. Okay. I have no idea how I, to. I don't either. Reports I've heard, I mean, just from neighbors, 60 to 84 <coughs> in East Central Iowa. Yeah. It's... It's going to be an interesting year. Mm -hmm. Another question for you. This one, uh, we like to have our analysts define terms every single week. And this one we, is our question to you. How is resistance, when we're looking at a chart perspective, mm. how is resistance set up? Or how do you determine where a line of resistance is on a chart? Okay, so the way I like to explain it, it's a little goofy, but it makes sense. Um, if you've ever done weight training, <clears throat> and you're on your back doing a bench press, right? So you're pushing higher, pushing higher, pushing higher, and then you know obviously your arms can only extend so much. So you have been at resistance. And so that is the higher level of things. And to figure out where that is on a chart, when you think about your barbell that you're holding up, it's obviously a straight line. So when you're looking at a chart, figure out kind of where the lines can connect as a dot. And sometimes you're straight up with your barbell and sometimes you're like this because it's going to fall off and you're about to need your spotter to come in and rescue you. Um, but it's, it's connecting the dots and you have to find your highest dots on the chart and connect them. So it can be like this or this or this. And how, how telling is resistance to somebody watching the charts? How much should you rely on it making a marketing I plan? would say they're accurate 75% of the time and you put a lot of... Um, uh, what was, what's the word I'm looking for? You put a lot of weight into it without, is that the right yeah. word? Yeah, yeah. You put a lot of stock in it. Stock, thank yeah. you. That's the word I'm looking okay. for. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. All mm -hmm. right. Naomi Bloom, thank you so much for spending time. I have one final question. Okay. Well, two questions actually. Iowa State, take the win tomorrow? I hope so. All right. <laughs> You'll be there way. cheering them on. Yes. Final question. Cubbies, Indians, who takes the series? Well, of course, we're all hoping for the Cubs. We are. We're all rooting for the Cubs. Rooting for the Cubs yeah. in five, right, or four, however many games it takes to oh. win it outright. Yeah. Four? Not seven. <laughs> I know. We don't want it to go to game seven. Don't make me laugh. Takes four. <laughs> right. Four out of seven. And we're games. one and one, so they can win on game six. I guess. Yes. Five, if they keep going. Four, six, right, eight. if they win tonight, tomorrow, <laughs> they've got one win already. No, we'd have to get to five games. Right? Yes. In a row? Yes. You're market experts at work, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. All right. With that, we'll let you go. I'm fired. Go Cubbies, go. <laughs> and uh, thanks for tuning in. Send us questions and uh, feedback and yield reports. Send it to Market to Market on Facebook and Twitter. Thanks for watching. Have a great week.